Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. Today we're going to address the issue of stale fuel in your lawnmower. Now stale fuel can cause all sorts of problems, obviously the first sign of which is that the lawnmower won't start. So I'm going to show you how to drain the stale fuel from your fuel tank, from the carburetor, and then we'll look at the repairs that may need to be done on your carburetor if it's had stale fuel in it, especially if it's been in there for some time. Okay, so we'll get straight on with it. So other than the fact that your lawnmower won't start, um, one way to tell if you've got stale fuel is simply to remove the filler cap and if you actually smell um, the fuel itself, instead of having that normal petrol smell, it will have a sweet, sickly sort of smell, almost like acetone or nail varnish remover. If you can smell that sweet smell instead of a normal petrol smell, that pretty much tells you that your fuel is off and has gone stale. So, yeah, I mean, that smells like normal petrol, obviously. I haven't got stale fuel in this machine. If the fuel in your tank smells okay, um, it may be just that the fuel in the carburetor is stale. I'll show you how to drain the float bowl of the carburetor, and we can have a look at the fuel coming out. If that smells sweet, then we can say that the fuel in the tank is okay, but the fuel in the carburetor was stale. So once we've drained the carburetor, we can then try again to start the engine. So I'll just replace that filler cap. And we'll get on to draining the fuel from the carburetor alone, or a small quantity of fuel. So the carburetor itself is located here, behind this black box. And the drain point is this screw hole here. I'll bring you in a little closer. So this egg cup shaped bowl here is the float bowl and this is the reserve of fuel that is in the carburetor. We need to drain it. The lower bolt is what actually holds the bowl on so we'll leave that in position at the moment and we're interested in this bolt here. This particular carburetor it's a 10 millimeter nut so I've got a 10 millimeter spanner and I'm going to undo, undo it anti-clockwise. Before I do this I'm going to just put some paper towel down underneath to absorb any fuel that comes out. Obviously do this in a well ventilated area, outdoors is best and away from any sources of ignition. Even though the fuel may be stale, it is still highly flammable. So I'll undo the nut anti-clockwise and the object here is just to allow perhaps only this float bowl's amount of fuel out. So the stale fuel out, you can see it's dripping, so I'll just undo the little nut and I'll get a little rush of fuel, there we are, and you can see it stopped flowing, it's still going, that will have got rid of the stale fuel, I can refit the screw, there is a little gasket underneath the screw, a little red gasket, make sure you don't lose that and re-tighten the little drain plug. Okay, so obviously I have some uh, fuel soaked rags. It will evaporate off them quite carefully, but obviously bear in mind that these will be highly flammable as well. So that should have drained any stale fuel if it were only in the carburetor. And if it hasn't been in there too long, and the fuel in the tank still smells okay, there's a good possibility that the lawnmower may now start. So that's the first scenario. Let's go on to a worst case scenario where all the fuel in the tank is stale and it's stale in the carburetor as well. So we'll go back to draining the fuel from the fuel tank. So underneath the fuel tank or the fuel filler cap, in this area, I'll just bring you in, you can see the rubber fuel pipe that connects to the bottom of the fuel tank with its little silver clip. So, if I just squeeze the two ears of that clip, I can pull that clip slowly back and down the pipe out of the way. Okay, so I have a suitable jug here with a spout and it will fit over the outlet at the bottom of the fuel tank. So again, I'm going to get some paper towel because there is a likelihood that I'm going to spill some fuel. So I'm just going to pull the pipe off 
and then quickly put the end of the funnel or the spout on my jug over the end of the fuel tank outlet. So I'll pull the pipe off, just gently tease it away. I'm going to put my hand up my finger over the end of the pipe and then place my jug in a good position there. So now the fuel tank will drain very slowly into my fuel jug. Of course, an alternative method is to draw it out through the filler cap. You can, uh, probably if there are two of you, one holding a jug and one tipping the lawnmower, pour the majority of the fuel out of the fuel tank. But I've got this little hand pump here. I'll simply dip the one end into the fuel, the other end in my jug. And I can simply fetch it straight out of the tank and into the jug. the fuel tank probably 99% empty. I'll just replace the filler at this stage so that I don't lose it. And then of course dispose of the stale fuel responsibly. This is actually fresh fuel. Stale fuel will be a, quite a bit yellower than this normal sort of very pale coloured fuel. Um, the stale fuel you'll tend to see it can be quite yellow and sometimes a brown colour when it's really bad. But yeah, you could pretty much tell when it's stale and obviously by the smell. So obviously, because we've only just drained the fuel tank, the carburetor bowl will have filled up again with the stale fuel after we drained it the first time. So we just need to remove the rest of the fuel from the carb. So yeah, okay. Again, using some paper towel. So I'm just going to leave that there to drain for a moment or two, probably a couple of minutes, so that any residual fuel in the tank will come out and drain down to the lowest point, which is here, where I've just taken the plug out. Just to make a little point, make sure you don't lose the little washer that's on the underside of the plug. That helps it seal when you put it back in, so just bear in mind that there is a little red washer on it. So that's completely drained now. I'm just going to put the little drain plug back in and tighten it up for safekeeping. And there we are. So having completely drained the fuel system, it's quite possible that if you were to refill it with fresh unleaded petrol, that the lawnmower may come back and everything works fine. Not always the case. Some damage may have been done to the inside of the carburetor. So we're going to look at the carburetor itself, taking it apart and repairing any damage and or replacing the carburetor. So we're going to need access to the carburetor. So first of all, we'll push down on these two lugs on the top of the air filter box and we'll take the air filter box away with its filter and pre-filter. So next, we need to remove the air box itself. Um, you can get a 10 millimeter spanner in here to undo the nuts. If you do have a socket, you will find it easier. So just loosen them off and I'll remove them completely. On the rear of the air filter box you will see this rubber pipe which connects to the air filter box to the crankcase of the engine. More often than not it's easier to take it off from the engine end like that than it is to take it off from the air filter box end. So that's so now we can gently pull the air box forward, but there is another rubber pipe connecting the primer bulb to the carburetor. I'll see if I can show you that. So I'll just gently spin it round, and you can see this rubber pipe here. Again, similar to the little clip on the bottom of the fuel tank, we can undo that, and we can pull off the rubber pipe. Now these can be a little bit firm sometimes, and you may need a pair of pliers, and I think in this instance I will need a pair, so I shall get a pair of pliers and show you. So I'll just get it by the bottom of the pipe, and well, there we are, it's going now, the pair of pliers, and that's it, I can pull the air box away. Take care not to lose this little clip. So that's now revealed the carburetor, so you've got complete access to it. 
Now, the simplest way is to actually remove the carburetor from the engine altogether. So we'll show you how to do that. So the first thing to do is to remove this gasket here. You'll notice on this particular machine that there is a hole here on the bottom left hand side. So if we just take a mental note of that, you'll know that it doesn't go on that way, it doesn't go on that way. When you come to put it back, it just obviously, you know you've got to put it back there with that hole on the bottom left hand side. So yep, yeah, we can remove the gasket. So exactly as before, we'll squeeze the little spring clip. Again, I'll use the pliers and I'll just tease the little rubber pipe. Once they start moving, you're away with these, okay? That's pulling the little fuel inlet pipe off the carburetor. Just, and away we go. So that's the fuel removed. Now all we have to remove is the linkage. So to remove the linkage, you will see this very fine spring with a hook on, and then we have the metal rod, which is coming from the governor. So I'll just get my fine pliers, just remove that fine spring out now if I pull the carburetor towards me turning the throttle as I go I'll get to a point where I can just lift that out of the little bracket so it goes in there and I'll get to a point here where I can just lift it out and that's the carburetor removed when you remove the carburetor it's possible that this gasket will come with it. Probably best to put that gasket back on there so you know where you are when you come to replace the carburetor. So replacement carburetors are available from our parts department and obviously refitting is the exact reversal of the way that we just took it off. I will show the refitting of it after we've looked at this particular carburetor. But as I say, brand new carburetors are available from our parts department. So I brought the carburetor down into the workshop and you will need to notice the orientation of this bowl on the carburetor and that the drain plug that we ended earlier is directly below in that orientation underneath the little primer outlet. So when we put it back on it has to go this way round. Okay, so 10mm spanner at the ready. We need to undo the lower bolt and remove the float bolt. Now there may be some residual fuel left in the carburetor, so I'll just put a piece of paper towel underneath to catch any of that. I'll hold it firmly down on the bench and remove the float bowl screw by turning it anti-clockwise and that will loosen the float bowl. There is a rubber o-ring under the top lip of this float bowl. Just be careful of that when you're taking it apart and don't lose it. So we'll just remove this screw completely. Again taking care not to lose the little red gasket and the float bowl comes away and as you can see there's no sign of rust or any debris in this float bowl which is a good thing if you've got any sign of rust or debris basically rust in your float bowl you will need to replace the carburetor okay so the float bowl is good everything's looking good so far you can now see the little o-ring in the top of the carburetor and I'll just get a little pointer the o-ring is here so I'll just pop it out very carefully trying not to mark it just being reluctant <laughs> okay we're getting there now there it comes and we'll put that to one side with the float bowl so the next thing we're going to do is to remove the float and there's a little pin here which slides freely back and forth it's kept in place by the float bowl that's why it doesn't come out when it's operating so we need to withdraw this little pin and the float should now fall again keep the pin safe We'll withdraw the float and you will see the little float needle here and it's very important that the end of that needle is clean 
it's suspended on the float in this little bee groove here. Some carburettors it has a little wire loop and sits on a tag, but this one is actually slid into the float here. And it does move around on a spring, but we need to clean the end of this. And we'll do that with some compressed air a little later. So we'll put the float to one side. Okay, so the little needle there, when the float is up in its high position and floating in the fuel, the needle pushes up and seals off the little taper on the end of the needle into a tapered seat in here. Again, we need to clean this out thoroughly. We can blow in through where the fuel comes in to clear out any debris. And then once we've done that, we can then clear backwards, back through this hole to blow any debris out of this little pipeline. So the next thing we're going to do is to remove the main jet. Now some carburettors, the main jet is screwed into the side, but most of these lawnmower ones, the main jet is up in this hole and you'll need a flat bladed screwdriver that's a good fit to undo it. So I'll get one of those. So I've got a screwdriver here and its blade size on the end is about four millimeters. That should be perfect. So I'll simply put it up into the back of the carburetor, find the slot of the main jet, there it is, and again, unscrew it anti-clockwise. Taking care not to force anything here. And there we are. It's unusual if your carburetor has been folded up or gummed up for these to fall out quite so easily. This is the emulsion tube. Normally this would actually, bear with me, would stay up inside the carburetor and the main jet would get to this sort of area and you would have to sort of tip it out to get the main jet out. Now the main jet has a hole right through its center. This can get blocked or certainly narrowed by the residues from stale fuel. It's almost like a varnish. Again, this will need to be cleaned. And as I said, typically the emulsion tube won't just come out that easily. I'll just pop it back in and see if I can show you. <laughs> okay, I'll have to turn it this way around. So if we look up inside the carburetor, you can see the emulsion tube is here. And if it is stuck, you can just take something blunt and push the emulsion tube down only a few millimeters and that's the point where normally you would just take it turn it around i'll just take it out of the way and tap like that and the emulsion tube would eventually fall out the end okay so we'll take the emulsion tube again you'll see the emulsion tube has a narrow end and a thicker end the thicker end goes in last, so when we re refit it, narrow end in first. And again, the emulsion tube has a hole all the way through the centre, and a lot of very small holes. Again, we're going to have to clean all these out, and it's quite often the case that many of these will get blocked if a carburetor has had stale fuel in it for any time. So we'll put that to one side, ready for cleaning. Again, with compressed air, we need to blow up through this opening to remove any residues. If you're fortunate enough to have a ultrasonic cleaner, um, all of this could be put into the ultrasonic cleaner, shaken for its half an hour in warm detergent, and then thoroughly blown out when it's done. Um, make sure everything is dry, all the passageways are blown out, all the little holes, Everything is blown out in the carb. You can remove the idle jet bypass, but um, probably not needed if it's just a stale fuel issue. But yeah, there are, obviously you can clean it out with the ultrasonic and then reassemble it all. We haven't got an ultrasonic here. So in this circumstance, I'd probably recommend spraying all the galleries out with carburetor cleaner, then letting it evaporate. Um, all the jets, everything like that, and then blow every one of the little holes out with compressed air. So everything's been cleaned, blown up with compressed air, 
and now I can put it back together. I'm going to take the emulsion tube first, pop that down in the bowl, then the main jet, obviously with the screwdriver slot facing outwards. Just get that started. Nearly there. There we go. And just nip that up. So that's the main jet and emulsion tube in. Next thing to refit is going to be the float with its needle. Now I did clean the end of the needle, we've blown everything out, so I'll just place it back in, making sure that the needle goes up the little brass hole there. I'll just let it sit there, and I'll replace the float pivot pin, which is, can't quite see it, here. I'll just move the float into the correct position and gently push the pivot pin back in. Now at this point you can test that the float is sealing correctly. If you stand it up this way and blow in through here you should be able to blow through freely. If you turn it the other way the weight of the float will push the needle down and seal the passageway and if you tried to blow in through here now you shouldn't be able to pass any air through. So that's a quick test to make sure that that's seating correctly. Okay. So the next thing to do is to refit the little O-ring back into the carburetor. Now we're going to take care that this sits in the little groove all the way around, which it does. And now we're going to refit the float bowl back onto the top remembering the orientation it could go on you know this way or it could go on any way round but in our case it needs to go on with a drain plug facing the little primer inlet so we'll just hold it there refit the retaining screw with its gasket and just nip it down again I'll just tighten that down onto the rubber o-ring okay that's firm and I'll just check all the way around this perimeter to make sure that everything's seated as it should be and I think we've done it so that's how to clean all the carburetor out um, yet there are several ways replacement carbs are available um, but in this case it's a fairly good carburetor. It didn't have st uh, stale fuel in for very long and it cleaned up quite nicely. So, time to replace it. Should you damage any of these gaskets when you take the carburetor off, these gaskets are also available from our parts department. So, I'm going to replace the carburetor. First, I'm going to put the governor arm back in the top. And then, I'll just slide the carburetor on to its two bolts. Next, I'm going to refit the delicate little spring back into its hole. You've got to be careful with this so you don't damage the end of the spring. There we are. So that's back in its position and it's operating correctly. And then back on with the main fuel pipe pushing it on firmly and again doing up the little spring clip okay next we can refit the gasket and the air box so again we took note where the gasket goes and it's that way round and the next thing to do is reconnect the little rubber pipe for the air box so I'll do that Again, bringing the clip down. That's that. And I can replace the air box back on over the two studs. I'll just put the two little nuts back on, turning them clockwise. And 
we go. Tighten them up with a spanner. No need to go stupidly tight with these. I'll replace the breather pipe back onto the little outlet on the engine. Again, pushing it home firmly. I'll replace the air filter cover. Two little lugs in the bottom, fit over these two bars. Lift it up into position and click the two little tabs back into the top of the air box. And there we are. That's the carburetor refitted. So I've just checked all my fuel connections. I've rebuilt it with another half litre of fresh unleaded petrol and just checked around for leaks and we don't seem to have any problems. So I think that's it. I just need to start it up now, check everything's okay and we've done the job. Well I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products visit www hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk I've been Adrian and happy gardening.